Hello, I am Mike the Zorch, and it's been a while since I have uploaded one of my vlogs. So I thought I would do so and let you know what's going on. Now, there's been a drought of content on the service, and I, I've already posted a video basically saying that I had fallen into my depression again. And there's a lot of th factors that went into that, uh, mostly delving into the whole SJW stuff with Chloe and the Professor is what triggered part of this because I, I absolutely despise political correctness. I absolutely hate it with a passion. Don't get me started. I'm, I'm, I'm holding myself back from going into a rant over it right now because it, it is pure evil. It is political correctness is darkness and evil. That's what it is. Darkness and evil pretending to be good. And what pisses me off even more is that YouTube is promoting it. YouTube is allowing channels to push this garbage. And they are punishing people who don't tow the party line. If you are not PC enough, they are deranking your videos, making it harder to find in search results. They are demonetizing you, or they're completely deleting you altogether. They want YouTube to be PC. They want they they're they're trying to Disneyfy YouTube as 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 uh, someone else described it, and it's destroying the platform. It is harming the people that made YouTube what it is today and they're favoring legacy media if you look at search results you look at search results and you will see uh, the legacy legacy media sources on the top on the top trending page you know the, the late night shows the the mainstream news channels You'll see them over the YouTubers, the content creators, the big channels that made YouTube the household name that it is now. Now, I'm rant, sort of ranting on this, but that's sort of the subject of this video today. Because I talked about mirroring my channel on BitChute. BitChute is a YouTube alternative that is built on the bit on built on the um, BitTorrent protocol, a web-based BitTorrent protocol, where you have you know seeders seeding the video and it streams to your PC on their on the um, BitChute website. Well, there's some problems with this. It, it, it there are uh, various problems with it, and also the service is not gaining as much support as I would have liked and so I have decided um, I may not go to BitChute quite yet I might I might put some videos there I haven't started putting anything on there yet because they their 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 service and how they work has some issues and then then I discovered something else now, this has been around for a while, but they're they're constantly in development, and I've made the decision that I'm going to, and I've already started uploading, I've already started, I'm going to put my stuff up on a service called Library, it's lbry.com. Now, Library uses a client um, application to access the service. So it's available for Linux. I I've, I've have it on my Ubuntu install on this machine that I'm using right now. It's available on Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. And it uses a very, it uses a completely different protocol. They design their own protocol. They don't use a website for their service. They don't use a website at all for, for viewing videos, searching for videos, or anything like that. They use an app. Um, which I think is actually a smart idea. I think it's a smart idea. They have, instead of having just a website on the desktop and then uh, 
an app on mobile, they can more unify things. Because the the app is very bare bones right now, but they are improving. They are improving it. A new version is coming soon that will be adding a lot more, a lot of new features. But the main draw of this is that um, one, there's no censorship on this service. In fact, it's extremely resistant to censorship. And the users own the platform. The company that is behind the, um, the service, Library Inc., they cannot go in and make up some arbitrary rules and force everyone to follow them. They can't. The way they've set it up, they can't do it. They also can't take a cut of the money you earn on the service. And that's the other thing about it, is that you you actually earn money on the service. How it works is that they they have leveraged blockchain technology, uh, borrowed it from you know, Bitcoin. Blockchain is a technology that is really taking off in security and banking and other businesses. It's essentially a different kind of database. Blockchain technology itself doesn't necessarily have anything to do with cryptocurrency. It's just, it is merely a way of storing data, storing data records in a way that preserves records, makes them transparent, and also makes it extremely difficult to tamper with. But the way the blockchain works, the way blockchain technology works, it's extremely difficult to forge in records. Extremely difficult to uh, tamper with anything because there's multiple copies of this blockchain. Multiple copies. It's, it's just plain text. It's just stored as, as plain text. But there are checks and balances in the system of how it works to where the system can tell if something doesn't jive. You can tell if something doesn't jive. <clears throat> so they use that and it makes their makes their service more secure. It, it, no service is 100% secure. No service is 100%. But this is a lot, lot harder to tamper with and it makes censorship almost impossible. Makes it almost impossible. Now they, they do have mechanisms in place to deal with things like if, if someone uploads stuff that they're not supposed to. Like if somebody uploads, um, you know, terrorist videos, you know, you know, recruitment videos for terrorists or, or uh, naughty stuff with kids. You know, you, you know what I'm talking about. If they, if they try to upload stuff like that. There are mechanisms in place for dealing with that. But if you post a video just smack talking about Hillary Clinton, they can't remove that. Like, in fact, the company itself cannot delete anything. Only the users can. Um, you, the, the user, the owner of the material can is the only one who can delete any videos off the service. Now, they can alter the URL, the, the special protocol URL that points to that video so that it's no longer available, but they can only do that if there is a legitimate legal reason. They can only do that if there's a legitimate legal reason. They will not do it for anything else. And users and people who upload videos earn a cryptocurrency. They have a cryptocurrency and it's on an exchange right now. There are various exchanges. I, I've looked at their list of exchanges. I know most of them. I know of most of them. I've, I've, I've seen most of them. So they are, they are, they're there. And you 
earn it by people, you know, watching your stuff, uh, by you uploading videos. You, 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 you spend a little bit uploading videos. Uh, you, you earn it by watching other people's videos, subscribing to other people's channels. People can uh, donate to your channel or you can set a price for your videos like if you if you make let's say let's say the guys at corridor digital decide to do a really elaborate effects heavy tv series and um they don't want to get mired in the whole thing with youtube to, to be on youtube red so instead of going to youtube red they go to library and they can set a, a price for their videos, like a, a 99, like a, like a coin. They can set a coin price, one coin for their videos. And so when you access that, you can you can buy it with your with your coins, and boom, profit. And the company doesn't take any. Uh, they don't take any cut of that. YouTube takes a 45% cut of all the stuff that uh, YouTubers earn. They take a, they take almost half. You know, there's this big debate over, over Steam taking a big cut from indie developers, a 30% cut from indie developers on Steam. It's worse for YouTubers. Yeah, they make it seem like what Steam's doing is so terrible. No, what, what YouTube's doing is terrible. They're taking a massive cut. They're taking a massive cut. But the the revenue that the service has, what they use to keep going, grows as more people join the service. They, it's how it's designed. So the more people that join library, the more they the more resources they have to use to continue growing and expanding the service and I have, I've looked at their website I've looked through their their FA their um, their Q&A's uh, their about page about all the people that are involved these are guys who were friends in college basically uh, you're saying this this is a blockchain based video service and it you pays you in cryptocurrencies and stuff. This sounds an awful lot like Steemit and DTube. And it does. There's a there's a significant difference. And uh, the owner of Gamers Bay, Daniel, will tell you about this. The way Steemit and DTube are built, the people who have the most wealth on the platform control it. Because they they control who who they they can determine who basically gets attention they can boost somebody and because of the way their system is built they can boost somebody and get someone's attention or they cannot and that person will never grow on their service so they can make or break you it, it's it's not a very democratic system. It's not a very fair system. They determine who gets to grow. The, 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 the bigger uh, users, the, the ones who were the early adopters on Steemit and DTube are the ones who get to determine who gets to thrive there. None of those mechanics exist on library everyone gets a fair shot no one has any unfair advantage over anyone else there's none of those mechanics in the service they've built nothing like that into it and they don't plan on building anything like that into it so if you're new you get a fair shot at success just like everybody else you know even if you even if you've been there for a long time you've earned a lot of their a lot of their their coin and you've made you made a lot of money from that it doesn't give you any extra power none on steam it and and dtube if you were an early 
early adopter and you made a lot of coin off their service, you've got all the power. That doesn't exist on, on library, and I like that. I like that a lot because I, I looked at it and because I know, I know about the two services because we started, we started blogging on Steemit. We might still blog some on, some on Steemit, but but those who have the majority of the wealth on the platform can make or break you. If you're new there, and basically they they, as I said, they can they determine who gets to succeed and who doesn't. That that's not built into the mechanics of library. That's not built into it. Anyway, I I seem I like it very much. I've been playing around with it ever since I installed it. Um, I've uploaded two videos so far, and I'll be uploading some more. Um, some stuff I've got coming up in the future for this channel and Gamers Bay, actually. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to upload both Gamers Bay and Zort Central content to that channel on on uh, Library. I'm going to upload the content from both channels on there that I do. And all the content that I make for Gamers Bay, I'm going to put on that channel, on the library. And so I've got stuff coming up that uh, involves uh, the This guy! Yes, this is what it looks like. Virtual reality, baby. Yeah. This is the Samsung Odyssey. It is a Windows mixed reality headset. It is... Turn to Microsoft. Windows mixed reality is basically VR. Um, I wish Microsoft would stop rebranding stuff because it's so confusing for consumers because these haven't really taken off that big and I think it's because of Microsoft's branding they, they, they tried to rename stuff to be different and this is basically VR this is no different than the HTC Vive. Now, Tigra has an HTC Vive, and so when I do my video for Gamers Bay, I'm going to compare this to the Vive. Because we have access to both headsets here. This one and his. And there are some things about this that make it superior to the Vive. And there are some things about the Vive that make it superior to this, and I'm going to be talking about those in the video I'm going to do for Gamers Bay. Plus, I have another episode of Bugged Out, a second episode of Bugged Out, that will talk about solving a problem uh, with this. Actually, actually, it's a problem that affects all VR headsets, but it will be something that will solve a, a problem that's more prominent with this, that has prompted a lot of people on Steam to give these headsets a bad rap. And, you know, that's something I'm going to deal with. In that video, so it'll be a, it'll be a little while before I get those videos out. If you don't see them within a couple of weeks, then you'll know I'm, we're probably moving at that point. Uh, that'll be the only thing that'll interrupt me making these videos is us moving. So that's what's coming. VR, VR to Resort Central and Gamers Bay, and and you these 
these you can play Steam VR games. I played Steam VR games with this. Steam VR works with it. Works with it really well. Now, there's some quirkiness with the tracking. I'll talk about that in the video. There's some quirkiness with it because it works very differently from the Vive. But um, these these deserve way more attention than they're getting. And because of Microsoft's stupid marketing, this, their determination to change the names of everything to make themselves look different. They should just call it Windows VR. Windows VR or Microsoft VR. You know, the 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 Scarlet Project Scarlet, the new Xbox, can power this. In fact, the the Xbox One X could probably power this, because unlike the Vive, the Vive you need an a, a uber powerful machine to run that thing. Despite the fact that this is a higher resolution than that. This is a much higher resolution than the Vive. But this requires a, a GTX 1050 Ti. An entry-level graphics card. Uh, that... The highest it can do is 60 FPS 1080p. An entry-level card. 4 gig entry-level card powers this but it can't power the Vive. And this has a higher resolution. Go figure. Anyway, I'll cover that in the video. And please look forward to that. Again, if I don't get it out, it probably means that we're in the process of moving. And I'll probably see if I can do any, do any videos on my phone. I have access to that because my our phones have been really acting up lately um, they've been not holding a charge properly like if I take my phone off the charger by the time I get back from the store it's died it's that bad we got to deal with that anyway thanks for watching I've been Mike uh, please some Consider subscribing to the channel if you like our content. Uh, we have a um, connection with the Gamers Bay channel and their community on MeWe. MeWe is a social media network that does not sell your data. They don't collect anything from you. They don't even run ads. They don't even run ads. Uh, they make their money by selling services, emoticons, they have services such as unlimited uh, voice uh, voice and video calling, uh, it's just like $1.99 a month, and uh, other, other services, and also they sell uh, more space, but the space they give you is pretty generous. I mean, I've been uploading a lot of stuff to them, and I have barely... I barely even made a scratch on what they give you for free. You're just signing up. It's a great service, and and best of all, considering what's going on right now with YouTube and other social media platforms, they do not censor you for your political views. So if if you are uh, a supporter for Trump. They don't censor you. you know, if, if you. If you're not PC enough, they don't censor you, which is great. So, and also, uh, if you want to help support the channel, um, before um, I get, before I'm able to get libr get my library channel fully up and running, uh, we do have a store. So the link for that and the community is in the video description below. I have been Mike DeZorch, thanks for watching.